Hello Degenerates and welcome to the final video of the year. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this journey and the biggest thing that I want to talk about now, the main thing that sort of got my name now, I guess, <laughs> is uh, commentary. So I haven't been able to watch too many Ultimate Tournaments, which is definitely, I've just been really busy, that's on me, but I do want to catch up with the meta and everything that's going on with it. Um, but today, while I was packing up all my stuff to go to Japan and the Disney College program, I was able to finally watch like Midwest Mayhem, and I was watching Let's Make Some Moves um, together. And oh god, the um, I don't know about the Midwest Mayhem commentary the weekly before it, and Let's Make Move. The commentary it was just like it was really bad. <laughs> So, for, for you guys out there, you young commentators, I definitely want to make a lot of guides for you out there um, just to help you guys get started. Um, if you guys don't know much about my commentary career, I actually did want to make a video that talked about kind of my journey with uh, Smash in general because I feel like there's a lot of interesting things that I think a lot of you guys could actually have, find useful with it. Um, but yeah, I got my commentary career started uh, two to three years ago at this point. And, you know, I first started off... Uh, doing commentary for all the Duck Hunt events that we would have on the Discord, uh, mostly with streams that we would run. I would commentate their matches, let them know what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong. A lot of people on there liked my commentary, so I was like, oh, okay, I guess I'll try it out a weekly. Um, and at our weeklies, we had two pretty good commentators, um, but then um, slowly it just became me over time. Um, I was like, I just became the main commentator of our region. Uh, one of our other good ones, like he retired. The other one got banned at some point. He's back now. Um, but, yeah, so I've been able to develop... I've been able to develop my commentary to a moment where... Um, I, I talk about what I like and what I personally like to see. And I feel like that's one reason why, you know, these videos and just what I do in general with uh, my commentary, I think, come off as, like, pretty genuine for the most part. I never... I never try to force or fake something out in a way. If I say something that I think is funny, it's because I think it's funny. It's not because I want you to laugh. I want me to laugh before I want you to laugh. <laughs> like, that, to me, if I can't make myself laugh, how the fuck can I expect to make you laugh? That's kind of the mentality that I go into. Um, and the other thing, too, is with me, I've always been interested in just talking about, like, these minute details and just, like, picking apart somebody's brain. That's what... I've always found to be the most interesting thing to talk about. So that's why when you see me, I'm a lot more analytical. Um, I take things a lot more calmly, but I do get really hyped into things. Like if I'm really invested into the match, you will hear it in my voice and I will be just like guns blazing for all that. Um, so there's a couple things that I want to address here, which are just, uh, I, the main things I want to talk about are the, the key points that you should really have um, when trying to become a commentator. Because I feel like, Let's start with the basics. A lot of things I'm doing are for beginners, so let's start there. Uh, the first thing that you want to do when you're trying to get into commentary is that you want to find the thing that makes you interested. Um, you know, I just shared some of my things. So I'll go over it again. But what I mean by this is think about all the commentary you hear and I bet you at some point you're going to find something to complain about. I mean, sometimes they're just god-awful and you don't want to listen to them. That was, that was a let's make move for the most part. Um, but, you know, sometimes, like, you know, they're good, but you're like, they're not for me. So figure out why that voice in your head goes off. It's like, what do I want to talk about that I find so interesting that these people aren't talking about? And one good thing about approaching it from that end is that you're going to be finding what your niche is and, you know, something that kind of defines you compared to other people. You're going to find people that talk about similar things. Like, there's no topic that hasn't been covered before at this point with uh, Smash commentary. But you can at least find an initial direction and go off of. Uh, the next thing that you should do is, you know, find what you're comfortable with. There's a lot of people out there that try to force themselves to be another commentator. Um, for example, a lot of fake hype ones. Uh, the two that got the worst of it uh, for a very, very long time, Osti and uh, Brozolina. A lot of times when people heard them, they were like, oh God, they just sound fake. They're just, they're just getting hyped over stupid shit. That was like the main complaint that you'd always hear. But over time, they were able to find a way to get comfortable and like just 
get natural with it. Like I've had the pleasure of at least commentating with uh, Brozolina a couple of times. And I never, I don't think I ever commentated with him in the phase where people didn't really like him. I only commentated him like, I think it was probably like a year after that was really a thing. And, you know, he, you know, he studied up on his knowledge. He found a really good flow for himself and he just found like a great uh, charisma and personality. Not everyone likes it. Not everyone has to, but as far as what a commentator's job has to do, you know, he kind of fills those things perfectly. Like, you know, he has his own voice. You can hear him clearly. He works really well off his co-caster. That's a, that's a big thing I need to talk about next. Um, and, you know, he, he t like one thing that he's always told me was that he always wanted to do more of the analytical commentary. Like that was his thing getting into it. Um, but he just kind of felt himself going more in that direction. I'm not exactly sure the reasons why. That's something that if you guys are interested in me in talking to him about it, I could definitely go. Um, I could definitely interview him and see what he has to say about that um, and see what pushed him in that direction. But uh, yeah, it's just you want to find things you're comfortable with. If you're if you're faking it or you have to force yourself, people are going to know. There's almost no way you can really fake it unless you're just genuinely really good at acting that's that's really the only way it's going to happen it's like you know you have to know the exact push and pull of it too so i definitely don't recommend that uh the third thing about getting into commentary is this commentary is a two-man act it's not one person it's two people working off of each other perfectly and just balancing each other and that's something that you really need to know uh, a lot of issues that some initial commentators have is, you know, they want to talk about a lot of things and too many things where the point that their co-caster just doesn't even talk at all. The most notorious example that's just unapologetic about this, that he never compromises with anybody. And you'll notice this in any, any cast that he does is Pierce. Pierce is fundamentally one of the worst co-casters that you can ever have just for that reason alone a lot of the knowledge that he's spitting out is wonderful it's great you know he's a he's a pro coach for a reason but for the life of him he will not let the other person get their opinion in or talk at all it's just like it's overbearing it's overblown that's something that a lot of people complain about and then like if you're co-casting with them just they'll hate it there's no one enjoys it at all and that's something that you need to realize like if you want to work with these people in the future you got to network with them. You got to be friendly with them. You got to learn how to work off of them. The more flexible you are, the more valuable you are, are in different positions and blocks. And that's something you need to take. You know, you don't always have to be the lead commentator. You can be a support commentator. And if you're really good, like um, another way to look at it is like, let's say a bunch of lead commentators apply. And there are not too many support commentators. And there's a lot of roles that you can fill right there. And, you know, support commentary is just so important. Like, if you like talking about those analytical things, support commentary is generally going to be that. You're going to be that second guy. You're not going to be a guy that introduces the topics or gets into, like, these wild, crazy plays. You can still get emotional and everything about that. But generally, you aren't the one, like, leading it. You're the one supplying. You're the one that's adding all the supplements to it. Um, so, yeah, the, the two, um, I guess on the fourth thing that I'll get to, too, so, so we had find your interest. Um, I forget exactly what I said, but yeah, um, don't fake it, two-man act. And then uh, I just had it on the tip of my tongue. Um, God, this is bad. <laughs> <laughs> now, I guess those are kind of like the initial things that you really need to get. Oh, number four. No, I'm going to just say this. Just do your research. Everybody gets called out for this. This is this is the my number one complaint out of all the commentary that I've seen so far for Ultimate. No one's fucking studying. <laughs> it is so apparent. Like, people don't know about the buff ledge options when it's like... It's not like you have to watch some niche videos like my shit that's on here. Like, you know, my nobody really knows my channel yet, except it's starting to get bigger. But, like, you know, Gimmer. Gimmer had posted the video about all the different ledge options. And I would say, like, 70% of the people that I was watching didn't know anything about what changed with the ledge. That's huge. Like, you need to know why ledge options now are a lot stronger than they were before and what exactly about them are stronger. Character knowledge-wise, you know, I'm not expecting people to really know too much about that. Um, going into not knowing something, just go in with an open mind. Be like, just admit at the beginning, so I don't really know what these characters are doing. I somewhat remember how they function in Smash 4. If you don't, then don't even mention that. Um, 
but then also uh, just do your best to study what's happening on stream and then just talk about it. And then from there, you should have a pretty engaging conversation with your co-caster if they know something or if they don't know nothing. If you, if you guys both don't know anything, and then make it a game for yourselves on trying to study them and like learn what's going on. You might ha end up having some of the most interesting commentary that you've had out of literally not understanding anything. Because um, more, more than likely, if you guys know nothing, then probably most of the audience knows it. You'll have like the 10% that are the ones that are blowing up chat, but you know, it's like 10%, I would say. Um, and then, you know, if they do know something, you're going to gain a lot of knowledge and you'll be asking the questions at the appropriate moment that all of the Twitch chat's going to be asking the questions as well. So when you have it like that, then, you know, you're going to build up something very, very good. And finally, the fifth main important thing is you need to remember what the goal of commentary is. Um, it's above all, you're supposed to entertain, but you're also supposed to educate and then just give them the flow. So tell them a story, educate, and entertain. I would say those are your three things that you really want to focus on uh, when you're working in commentary. Find which one you like focusing on most out of those three, and then go in that direction at first, and then spread yourself so you can just understand the spectrum and then how to work off of people better. Because once you have that, then you'll be able to work with anybody, and you'll just be able to find just what your voice exactly is on screen and just in general so you know take it seriously don't kill yourself doing this but you know study find your niche be natural with it um and then yeah don't fake it <laughs> those are those are kind of the big things so you know if you guys are commentators i really hope that this helps you out um I think this, this is either being released on New Year's Eve or New Year's Day. I don't know which one. I'm just going to say this right now. Um, you know, it's been a pleasure being a part of this community for the entirety of the last, you know, four years and everything. And 2018 has been pretty spectacular for me. You know, I finally got to compensate my first major with CEO. Got to do my top eight with uh, doubles there. Um, I also got to manage um, all the backups for that too. So that was really cool. I got to know a lot. If you guys are watching this, you know people i cast it with people i interact with cool that you guys are tuning in for this definitely posting this on commentary discord um uh, and yeah you know i want to work more on my commentary coming next year i hope all of you guys want to as well and then you know if you've never even attempted this before like i took the leap of faith and then i found i really enjoyed it and a lot of people enjoyed my words it was kind of funny i remember the we posted a commentary tier list on the on the Smash uh, commentary page, and I, remember, I was like flabbergasted. They put me as like the S plus tier on there, and I just didn't understand why. <laughs> I still kind of don't like. I just I just kind of feel like I'm just some guy talking, but a lot of people just I don't know. I mean, if you guys are watching this, enjoying it, then I guess that speaks to that. But it's just like I don't know. I just see me as me, and you know, if you can see yourselves as that. And then I'm pretty sure, you know, there'll be these things that people appreciate about you that you just won't be appreciating about yourself on a general basis. And, you know, that's a good thought to have going into the new year. Uh, so with that guy said, I'm, you know, happy new year's guys. Um, can't wait to be talking to you guys from Japan, sharing my experiences there, learning from there as well. And, you know, just if you guys want to visit there or anything on the future, smash job related mental health wise or just like personally i want to be there for you guys and i want to make content that helps support you in any way possible and myself <laughs> and um you know with that said make it a good one so take care